Hey guys, it's me again, uh, yet again. Uh, three videos in one day, it's pretty good. Um, I, uh, I got back from the beach, and I was really itching to do some videos, so I guess I'm just full of videos today. Um, and today I'm going to do one of the ones that I promised uh, not too long ago. I know there's a lot of videos that I've uh, said I would do that I haven't got to yet, and I do apologize. Uh, they're coming, they're going to come eventually, I don't know when, but it could be next year. But uh, uh, I got a couple requests today too. I reviewed uh, Last House on the Left and uh, House on the Edge of the Park. And um, I got two requests uh, today, actually. One was to re review the first Wrong Turn movie. I uh, would talk about the sequels as well. I have all six movies, so um, I need to definitely rewatch them before I do that review. Um, so that'll that'll become it's one of the ones I've been playing on doing. I kind of want to focus on the classics first before I got to like more modern movies. But I have reviewed Jeep Jeepers Creepers, and that's a newer one. So uh, I will getting to getting to Wrong Turn eventually. And another request I got was uh, to review a King Diamond album. Um, more specifically, uh, maybe Abigail or Them, which are probably his two best albums. Um, I have previously reviewed uh, Melissa by Merciful Fate, but uh, I don't think I've actually reviewed a solo uh, King Diamond album from the other King Diamond band, with Andy LaRogue and, and King Diamond himself and all them. Um, but I definitely should, because I uh, freaking love King Diamond, huge fan here. Um, but today I want to review one of the ones I promised. Um, uh, not too long ago I said that I would do a... Um, a video of the, uh, a part three of my big four of thrash metal, in which I look at the albums from uh, uh, Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, and Megadeth. Um, I looked at their debut albums, and I looked at their sophomore albums, and I wanted to do a video where I talked about the third album as well, but I do not own So Far So Good, So What by Megadeth on CD. I have it on cassette, and I have all the songs on my iTunes and Spotify and everything, but I do want to purchase the actual album, the actual CD, so I can have a physical product in my hand as a visual aid. But another video I promised I'd do was the Jason vs. Leatherface uh, limited comic book series. Um, I highly recommend these for fans of uh, the Friday 13th and Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchises. Uh, they're very good, uh, even better than some of the movies for both series, uh, actually. Um, very, very good. It's one of the videos I promised. Um, I've had these for years, and I've always thought they were really, really good. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a great idea to have a crossover, Jason fighting Leatherface. Uh, these actually came out before Freddy vs. Jason, too, I, I, I believe. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'll look up the date here in a minute, but I'm um, pretty sure. And, you know, I remember Freddy vs. Jason fake first came out, and I was like, oh, boy, we're going to have all kinds of crossovers. We're going to see Jason fight Michael, and Jason probably fight Leatherface, and, you know, and Pinhead fight the tall man, <laughs> and, you know, all this crazy stuff. But, no, we got crappy reboots and remakes instead, so... Dun, 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 So, it's pretty sad. But, uh, anyway, Jason vs. Leatherface. Um, now, these are obviously non-canonical. They don't fit in the continuity of the movies. Um, if I did say, uh, if I did have to guess, like, when they took place, I would say, um, well, the thing is, uh, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, came out in 1986, but it would have to take place later on because Tommy, if you remember, he was a kid, in uh, the fourth film, and then he was, like, a lot older in the fifth film, so the fourth film takes place in 1984 when it was released, but the fifth film has to take place years later, because he was, like, more grown up, so the sixth film can't take place in 86, uh, but it'd be nice if it did, because this has Leatherface's original family in it from the first uh, two movies, Drayton and the Hitchhiker, uh, which I think they kind of, and the grandpa, too, um, I think they kind of combined the Hitchhiker and Shop Top into one. They're supposed to be twins, and, you know, the Hitchhiker died in the first movie, and Chop Top was in Vietnam, uh, you know, played by Bill Mosley. Hitchhiker is played by Edward Neal. Um, Chop Top was um, in Vietnam during the, the first movie, and then he came for the second one, and he carried around the corpse of the Hitchhiker and called, you know, called him Nubbins. So I think they kind of just fused the, the two characters into one. Um, he's called the Hitchhiker in these books, but uh, he has a lot of the same catchphrases that Chop Top had. So I think this one to have, you know, the, the, the crazy guy, you know. But, uh, but yeah, they do have the cook, Drayton Sawyer, played by Jim uh, Sadal, Sido, whatever, in the movies. Um, you know, the grandpa, as I said, and a few other uh, family members, most of which are his corpses. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, the three main ones, Leatherface, the cook, and the hitchhiker, uh, they're in here. Um, so that'd be good if it took place in 1986, before the events of Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two, um, but, like, after... Um, Jason lives because he got chained at the bottom of the lake um, at the end of uh, part six, and that's where he um, starts out in this one. He's chained at the bottom of the lake. Um, well, let's go ahead and take a look inside. Um, yeah, basically. Um, yeah, these are really good. These are even flashbacks to Jason's youth, um, you know, and he kind of befriends the Sawyer family. Um, they're actually Iranius, 
er falsely referred to as the Slaughter family in these books. They're supposed to be Sawyer, not Slaughter. Um, but I think that might have been their original name, uh, Slaughter, but then they changed it to Sawyer. Like, you know, it, they never said it in any of the movies, but in part two, they were given the last name Sawyer. But yeah, it starts out in Crystal Lake, uh, Jason vs. Leatherface. Yeah, it came out in um, 1995. Okay, so this is way before Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, this is like right after, you know, this is a couple years after Jason Goes to Hell, which I also have the comic adaption of, thanks to my good buddy Matt the Collector. Um, thanks again, buddy. Bro. Um, yeah, this was written by Nancy Collins and David Imhoff and drawn by Jeff Butler. Um, he's a great artist. I think I have a few other comics uh, drawn by him. Because um, I've seen covers similar to this. Um, actually, he didn't actually draw this cover. This cover was... was um, Drawn by Simon Beasley, or Beasley, I don't know, I can't pronounce the names unless I've heard them pronounced, um, you know, because there's so many different pronunciations, uh, but yeah, Jason Vers Leatherface, yeah, anyway, as I said, starts out in Crystal Lake, uh, Jason's chained at the bottom of Crystal Lake, um, as you can see, uh, very good artwork there, really awesome, um, basically he's accidentally, um, transported via boat, um, to Texas, um, <clears throat> In a truck, he well, he starts in a boat. Then he goes in a truck um, because they yeah, they they're these bad guys are like polluting the water and they're taking some of the toxic waste out or something. I don't know. Uh, and then he ends up on a train. Uh, he kills this uh, this homeless guy. Um, yeah, look at that. Some good violence, some good gore in these as well. Um, yeah, kills this homeless guy. Ends up in kills a couple more guys. Uh, the train crashes, he emerges, look at him, he looks all pissed off. Jason Voorhees is so freaking cool. Uh, and he ends up in the backwoods of Texas where he runs into the hitchhiker and Leatherface. And at first they fight, as you can see. They have a, you know, duel with a chainsaw and a machete. Pretty awesome stuff. Um, you know, yeah, Jason Vers Jason and Leatherface meeting face to face. Uh, this should have been a movie. That would have been awesome. Way better than the crappy reimaginings. Um... So yeah, they run into Jason, they kind of befriend him, and they take him home, he meets the cook, uh, yeah, Drayton, and uh, some of the other family, you know, there's the grandpa, and then who's still barely alive, and then there are one of their aunts, who's a corpse, as you can see, um, and Jason even remembers back to his childhood, when he had to write his name on the board in chalk, he writes it in blood here, or they're, they're chili, which of course is made of people, they're cannibals, the stories are cannibals, so he kind of befriends them at the beginning, and uh, yeah, to be continued, so that's issue one, um, and so, yeah, issue two, uh, basically what happens is Jason notices that, you know, the hitchhiker kind of abuses Leatherface, his younger brother, and Jason remembers his own past, his own twisted uh, childhood where he was abused by his father, uh, not given a name in this series, but we know his name is Elias, as revealed in Jason Goes to Hell, Elias Voorhees. And they also mistakenly refer to his mother as Doris. Uh, Doris um, is Jason's mom in here. Really, her name's supposed to be Pamela. Uh, in the movie, she was known as Pamela Voorhees. But yeah, here we go. Um... Yeah, Jason vs. Leatherface, issue two. Um, yeah, he's remembering when he drowned as a boy. Lots of cool flashbacks. It really gets into the character of Jason. He's feeling all these alien emotions, all these feelings that are just totally new to him. Like, he's never had friends before, really. And he's kind of a friend of this demented family. They're just like him. Like, he fits in right very well. He's, he's one of them, you know. He gets along with Leatherface because they both wear masks. And he really takes Leatherface aside when his older brothers abuse him. Uh, but yeah, everything's going well, you know. Um... Drayton's a really cool character in this, too. I like him a lot. I liked him in the movies as well. You know, played by Jim Sido, uh, the cook. Yeah, he's just awesome here. <laughs> that funny? They're eating people. Um, so, yeah, they go to Killing Spree together. You know, the Hitchhiker, Leatherface, and Jason. Uh, they take the pickup truck. They go to the gas station. Um, Hitchhiker shows Jason some of his art, which is, like, made of corpses, made of skeletons and stuff. Pretty cool. Um, and they kill a couple people so they can eat them. And the cannibals uh, have a good time because Jason's a you know great killer, of course. Um, but Hitchhiker tells him that Leatherface usually makes the girls scream a little more, and Jason just kind of killed him right away. And, yeah, this Hitchhiker showed Jason his art collection, uh, very demented. Uh, yeah, and this is where Jason remembers back to his past when he was a young boy, been abused by his father, and then there's his mother uh, again, uh, called Doris, when she's supposed to be Pamela, um, and uh, she actually kills the father. She actually slices his head open with a freaking big-ass knife. Um, so, yeah, he doesn't like the Hitchhiker abusing uh, Leatherface, so he knocks him on his ass. And then, uh, yeah, he befriends uh, Leatherface. You know, and then they get... Hitchhiker and Leatherface get into kind of an argument. The cook's just sitting there like this, you know. And then Jason's remembering the good old days of Crystal Lake, killing his, you know, all those campers and stuff. There's the grandpa and the dead aunt or one of the grandmas, I don't know. They have a lot of dead people in their family. And there's uh, 
Drayton remembering his dying sister Velma. It really goes back into the origins of the Sawyer family. You know, there they all are. There's you know, there's Drayton and Hitchhiker, Leatherface, their parents. I guess the um, and the sister. I guess the grandpa. Is the grandpa supposed to be like Drayton's father? Is he the father of the three brothers? Because I mean, why do they call him grandpa then? I mean, is what happened to the father? If he's their grandpa of this trio of cannibalistic brothers. Who's the father? Or is he supposed to be the father? I, I don't know. It's never really explained, but it's not that important anyway. Um, but yeah, that's that's issue two. Uh, now issue three, Face Off. And as you, you probably recognize his artwork, and definitely Simon Beasley or Beasley or whatever. Um, he's drawn a lot of art uh, <clears throat> pictures like that, similar to that, with the bodies dumping Jason out with their, their victims. And this is where they start fighting. Um, yeah, we have the family. Um, there's, oh, by the way, there's also really cool articles in here in the back that kind of, they talk a lot. This is actually where I first heard the theory about Jason possessing Roy in Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, which I also agree with. I think he possessed him too, because it makes me enjoy the movie more. I know that wasn't their intention, obviously, at the time, but you know, Jason goes to hell. Also, Creighton Duke is a grown-up Reggie, and, you know, he knows that Jason can possess people because he possesses Tommy at the end of Part 5. Uh, I know it's a far-fetched theory, but it makes more sense than the in-universe explanations we're given in the movies. I've probably put more thought into it than the actual makers of the films. Uh, but yeah, Leatherface, I mean, uh, Hitchhiker's mad at Leatherface because he's been reading this comic book. So it's an Iron Man comic. Yeah, Iron Man, awesome. He reads Iron Man, that's so cool. And so, you know, he's, he's fighting him, and Jason uh, defends Leatherface, but then they start fighting, and they see that Jason's definitely a force to be reckoned with. I mean, he's an immortal zombie. He's like an unstoppable... Terminator like juggernaut, you know, he's already dead. They're just mortal. They're just regular humans. Uh, but Leatherface, you know, I mean, you know, you don't fuck around with Leatherface. So yeah, there's a big fight. That's where the Jason versus Leatherface comes in. Uh, you guys definitely gotta read this comic. My abridged version isn't doing it justice, but uh, you gotta you gotta check this out. You guys gotta read this. And uh, I'm not gonna show you the ending because I don't dare spoil it. Um, but let's just say there's a really cool scene where uh, Leatherface um is respectful about Jason's mask. Um, and uh, he doesn't want um, them to take Jason's mask off. So bad. There he goes, returning to Crystal Lake. But I won't spoil what happens before that. I won't tell you who wins. Uh, but then there's a bonus comic, The Toxic Turtle. I mean, you can see Jason's still alive, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean he won. You'll have to read it to find out. Yeah, the Toxic Turtle, I don't really know. There's not really any dialogue. There's no, like, words or anything. Just, like, a weird thing. There's a cool skeleton, so... And yeah, as I said, the articles in the back are pretty cool. A ported, portrait of the artist with hockey mask and chainsaw by Nancy Collins. Uh, really cool articles. They're very good reads. Um, I to read the comics. Definitely check those out. Um, but yeah, well, it's essentially like Jason versus Leatherface. Um, that's how it all goes down. Uh, my thoughts on it, I think it's excellent. I think um, I consider these, I kind of consider these canonical, um, you know? Uh, I think they're, as I said, I think they're better than some of the movies. I think this... Uh, this comic book three issue series is probably better than, you know, Jason Goes to Hell or definitely better than Jason X and, you know, infinitely better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation uh, and any of the remakes for that matter. Uh, but yeah, I really, I really dig these. I kind of wish they made it a little longer, you know, it's only three issues, but um, I wish they'd make like a, you know, another series. I'd, um, they definitely need to make a Jason versus Michael Myers because I think that would work really well. You know, two masked, silent killers who, you know, Michael Myers doesn't have, like, a family like Leatherface does. So that, I think that would be really interesting. And definitely have to have some characters, you know, from the other films. Like, Dr. Loomis should be there. Uh, maybe Tommy Jarvis. Um, you know, because there has to be, you know, something that, you know, ties the, you know, the characters together. There's got to be somebody who's there to explain um, both slashers uh, but yeah definitely check this comic series out if you're a fan of horror if you like slashers it's excellent um, i love comic books and i love horror movies uh, i love jason i love the other face so this is definitely right up my alley when i saw these i had to get them they were a must-have so i purchased them right away and i've had them for years i got them uh they're still relatively new too when i got them uh, just like maybe uh maybe like four or five years years old so uh but yeah these came out way before Fred vs. jason so the idea of a crossover was uh wasn't invented you know with uh, that movie, but then again, you know, Jason Goes to Hell ended with Freddy's, um, knife fingers, uh, his glove hand, uh, grabbing Jason's mask and pulling it under the ground, so everybody knew it was coming, so, uh, but yeah, I'd love to see Jason cross over and, you know, fight all us, you know, other slashers. We've seen him fight Leatherface right here, we've seen him fight Freddy, I really want to see him fight Michael. If there is a comic series that exists where Jason fights Michael Myers, let me know in the comments, because I will check that out right away. But yeah, alright guys, well, that's been Jason versus Leatherface. Written by Nancy Collins and um, 
done very, very well. Very well. Uh, great illustrations. Uh, great storyline. Uh, very well done. Very respectful for both franchises, despite uh, a few of the names being wrong uh, for Leatherface's family. But um, definitely a good read. All right, guys. Uh, I haven't done many book reviews, so uh, I'm going to try to get some of those. So check these out. Um, I'll be getting to uh, all those other videos I promised doing. I will uh, review Wrong Turn and a King Diamond al album and uh, soon enough. So uh, look out for those. I'm Hellhound. Uh, later.